Hi, I'm Pastor Cedric Jefferson. I'm Melvin Tisdale. And I tell you, we are excited for what we have for you today. I'm ready. I tell you, I know you're ready. This word is going to impact your heart. It's going to change your life. And if you've been watching this broadcast and it's been impacting your life, uh, become a covenant partner in this ministry. And, and I mean, tell you, and be a part of something that's doing impacting the streets, the neighborhoods, and the rough areas and, and areas that people don't like going to, especially church people don't like going to. Amen? But we go to. And support this. Be a part of what God is doing in this ministry. And we love you and we care about you. Amen. So get your coffee, get your dog, get your cat, get ready to be impacted by the word of God. Today I have with me General Tisdale. I'm so excited to have him here. He, I tell you, he has been such an impact in my life, General. I'm so glad you're here. It's good and, to be here, son. Amen. And we're so excited for the word we have for you today. Amen. General, tell us what we're talking about today. We're going to be talking about the inheritance of sons. Amen. And it's... Uh, we just go to uh, the book of Acts, chapter 26, and we'll see where Paul, as he was uh, on the road to Damascus, where he was confronted with Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus spoke to him in verse 15 of Acts 26. He said, so I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness of the things which I have which you have seen, and of the things which I will reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. And then he begins to tell us what most of us know, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. The church preaches the forgiveness of sins, but this last part, he says, and that they might receive an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in Christ Jesus. Oh, that's good. We don't want to talk to you about heaven. We <laughs> want to talk about the inheritance that's right. that God has for us here today. Amen. If you compare these scriptures with what it says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, it says, we are all children of God mm. by faith in Christ Jesus. One translation says, we're all sons of God by faith in that's Christ right. Jesus. That's so what right. I want to do is talk about what the inheritance is of the sons. Oh. Our destination is heaven. Oh, that's good. But I have an inheritance from God here in the earth today. Oh, that's good. And I need to be aware of that. And if I, do, if, I, if I just go to somebody and tell them when they die they're going to get to go to heaven, that's good news. That's right. But there's other good news oh, as well. There's the good news right. that I have an inheritance here in the earth. And we need to see what that is. That's right. Uh, one other thing I'd like to just, for anybody that might have a question, 1 John chapter 3 says this, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. Oh, that's good. That's the Apostle John uh, speaking in agreement with what Paul said in Galatians. Uh, verse 2 says, Beloved, now... Are we the sons of God? Mm. It isn't going to be in the future. That's it's, right. Now we are the sons of God. Now, in order to understand what this inheritance is, we have to go in the Old Testament. So if you have a Bible, turn to Psalms chapter 2. And we're going to see what the inheritance of a son is. Amen. Now, Psalms 2 is uh, among the Psalms that are referred to as messianic psalms in other words they're psalms that are prophetic words concerning the coming of messiah what you mean by pathetic what you mean by well pro prophetic. Yeah, prophetic in other words it's a prophecy a word spoken foretelling that the messiah was coming oh, and good. there are a number of those in the in the psalms psalms okay. 2 is one of them now we're, what we're going to do is for the sake of time we're going to go to verse 7 okay. psalms chapter 2 Verse 7, the psalmist says, I will declare the decree. Mm. In other words, he says, I'm going to say something that's already been said. Oh, that's good. That's good. When, that's a good. decree is something that has gone out. God has made a decree, and the psalmist is saying, I'm going to say what God said. Oh, that's good. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Okay. Now, this is specifically Amen. speaking about Jesus Christ. But I just read to you Galatians 3.26 that yes, says yes, we yes. are all sons of God by faith 
in Christ Jesus. Right. So this psalm is about me. It's about you too. If you're in Christ, if you know Jesus as Lord, then this psalm is about you. That's good. And it's, uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and read a little more in sure. Psalms chapter 2. He says, I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, Thou art my son. Mm. This day I have begotten thee. Mm. One thing that we as believers have to come to the place of being able to do is saying, I am a son of God. Oh. I have a friend uh, that I was talking with the other day, and he said somebody had asked him what church he went to, what denomination was he a part of, and he said, I quit telling people <laughs> I go to right. a particular That's church. Right. He just said, I'm a son so, of God. That's right. I tell them I'm a son of God. That's right. And he said, you know, I got more attention that way <laughs> <laughs> than, than when I told him what church I went to. Oh, and so he said... Uh, he's just declaring the decree. I'm That's a right. son of God. That's right. And God, what, what we need to do is get in agreement with God. God has declared the decree. God has sent out a decree that in Christ Jesus that we each are sons of God. Amos, I believe it is 3, 3 says, how can two walk together right. except they be agreed? I have to agree with God. You need to agree with God that you are a son of God. And when you do that, then what you do is put yourself in line with the Word of God and in line for this inheritance oh, so that God has for us. And I believe, General, I believe that it takes you stepping out in faith, declaring this. So you may not feel like it. You may sometimes don't see yourself as being uh, like a son of God or That's acting right. like a son of God. But you've got to declare that thing over yourself. You've got to right. speak that word, I'm a son of the living God. Because it's the truth. That's it exactly the right. word. Exactly. Uh, I don't wake up feeling like a son of God every morning. <laughs> Just because I don't feel good That's doesn't so mean good. I am not who God says That's I am. That's right. And so we, we declare the decree. Amen. And then in verse 8, Psalms 2 verse 8, he says, ask of me. Mm, mm. Now this is the father speaking to his sons. He says, ask of me. Now the word, the Hebrew word there mm -hmm. that's translated ask is a word that means request, mm. require, oh, or demand. Man, that's right. That's and right. you say, well, Brother Tisdale, can you demand? Well, not in the sense that I get in his face and say, you got to give me that. Yeah. But when I, if I have a checking account, uh -huh. and any time I write a, a check, oh I'm making God. a demand on that account. Exactly I have right. an account with That's God. Right. I'm, in his, I'm in his family. I am his son. And so That's he right. says, make a demand That's right. on what I've promised oh, you. Not good? That's and so, so good. he says, ask of me, and That's I right. shall give you the heathen for your inheritance. Now the word, this is the old King James. It says Now heathen. you're talking my tongue. That's the, it there. Yeah. Oh, the, I'm about to shout on that. Oh, that's good. The king. heathen, it means, the word could be translated Gentiles yes. or nations as well. So ask God, God. for the nations. God. Ask God for the heathen. Mm. Now here's the, here's the thing that most people stumble at. Everybody thinks that means we're going to get a whole bunch at one time. Mm -hmm. But when God got Abraham... Yes, he did. God called him a father of many nations. So when God got Abraham, he got nations. Oh, that's good. When you get one man. Oh, that's good. That's you, good. It's just like when you get nations. You say, well, Jesus is coming just any time, and that couldn't happen. Well, I know Jesus is coming, but let me tell you, just looking at you straight, that's right. you don't know when he's coming, and I don't either. <laughs> and if, if I knew... Mm -hmm. that Jesus was coming this evening at 7 o'clock, <laughs> I'd still be here doing what I'm doing oh, right that's now. Good. That's good. I, I, because he said, he said, occupy that's right. till I come. That's and he right. hadn't come yet, so I still got to be about my father's business. That's good. So he says, ask, make a demand, request, require, and I'll give you the heathen, <gasps> the nations. And you say, well, Brother Tisdale, I, I don't feel like I'm much of a preacher. I don't feel like that I can touch people's lives. Uh, that's not the issue. You're a son of God. You that's have the, uh, the promise of God. He yeah. said, ask, that's right. request, require. Ask God to send somebody across your path. You don't have to, 
uh, just hunt them up. That's right. Yeah. Put yourself in places where people are. Oh, Everybody right. does that every day. You go to the store, you go to the job, right. you go to uh, your business, and that's there's right. people there. That's right. And and wherever there's people, that's right. there's heathen there. That's right. <laughs> there's that's people right. that don't know the Lord. But gentlemen, that's what I was saying too. At first, we was discussing. <clears throat> I believe a lot of people sometimes struggle with on their emotions. I feel like it someday, like you were saying, when yeah. I wake up, and they base it on their what they do good or what they do bad. That's right. Instead of uh, uh, putting a demand on what God's word says about them. That's exactly right. Because if you right. really believe what God's word says about you, you, you'll put a demand on that thing. That's what And you expect, did. expect the word of God to manifest That's in right. you. That's right. If we, if, faith is this, son. Oh, my God. Faith is hearing what God says, yeah. believing what God says, doing what God says, and leaving the results in his hands. Oh, I don't have God. to make it happen. That's All I have right. to do is hear what he says, mm -hmm. believe what he says, and that's do right. what he says. And if I leave the results in his hands, then that's his problem. That's it's right. not that's mine. Right. I that's don't right. have to make it happen. That's right. All I'm required to do is obey. obey. And I can do that. Oh, I ha yeah. I, when, when God tells me to do something, yes. he told me to ask. That that's means right. I've been authorized to do that. <laughs> when he told me to require oh, make it a man, I've been authorized to do that. That's right. A lot of people, when they, they read that God made commandments, uh, they look at it in a negative sense, but really a commandment is that's an right. authorization. That's right. When, that's you, when you tell Brother David over there to go do that's something, right. you authorized him to do it. Well, you better do it, boy. Yeah, but you, but you authorized <laughs> That's right, that's you right. You gave him that's the authority to do it. And exactly. so it's the same way with God. When he tells us to do something, He's authorized us to do it, and it don't make any difference who says I can't. Even right. if my own feelings say that I oh, can't, that's good. God's word says I can't. That's he right. authorized that's me That's right. Too. Amen. Now, the, the ninth verse of Psalms 2 says that you shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, a lot of people read that. And I, and I had misunderstandings yeah, about it for a long that. time. But that. I believe this. It's talking about harvest. He says, you shall break them with a rod of iron. In those days, they used a, a thing called a flail. Mm -hmm. A flail was a... Like a, a Well, like nunchucks. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a, a, a rod of iron, maybe so long, maybe even a piece of wood, but it's got a, a chain on one end of it, and then on the, end of the other end of the chain, there's another rod of iron, and they use that to beat the grain mm. loose from the heads. They would cut the stalks of wheat mm. and then they would beat the grain loose from the, from the wheat, uh, from, from the heads so they could gather the grain so they could grind it to make flour. That's good. Well, what's that got to do with people? People are tied up bound up oh, in their gosh. world's way of thinking. Oh, Even just, religious people are right. bound up in their own traditions and doctrines of men. Mm -hmm. And God said, I'll give you a rod of iron to break them loose oh, from their man, ways of good. thinking. That's because good. until a man is broken loose from the world system that's so good. and is understands that there's a kingdom that God has for him to enter into. I didn't say heaven. I said a kingdom. kingdom. That's right. Jesus said the kingdom of God is right there. It's at hand. Oh, it's right here. Man. He said it's within you. That's and right. so the kingdom of God is wherever I go. That's right. Wherever that's right. I go. Oh, that's good. And so he says, you break them with a rod of iron. Now, I left out something in verse 8 that I got to go back and pick up. Yes, sir. He says, ask of me and I'll give you the heathen as your inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth oh, for your possession. Oh, my God. So that means... That's good. For you, for me, wherever we go, That's good. that we're authorized to ask God for the heathen. We're authorized to harvest them oh, wherever good. God sends you. That's good. Now, just because you go someplace mm -hmm. and decide, well, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. James says, uh, don't do that. Yeah. He says, uh, better find out what God's doing. That's if you're right. In the book of James, it That's talks right. about right. not doing that. Don't, don't you decide. Let God decide. Jesus right. said, I only do what I see my father do, right. and I only say what That's I hear my father That's say. Right. So right. as we as sons of God, we, we have an example. Jesus said that. So we can set about doing what father says do, right. and wherever he's placed us, that's right. Some people feel like Alexandria Pineville is the, in, the uttermost part of the earth. It's the end of the world. But, <laughs> uh, but it's, 
it's the place God has given us. That's God, right. I've been here for the last 32 years. God That's placed right. me here. He's given me this yeah. as my possession. That's and so right. wherever I go, I get to harvest That's right. in his kingdom. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, he's and all I have to do is ask. That's right. And right now, uh, as as we're doing this, mm. we're breaking people loose from ways of thinking. Mm. We've said some things that'll give people understanding yeah. in areas that they didn't see before. He said, "Ask." That's right. Make and a I, request. And general, I believe that we always when we talk about increase in our lives, <clears throat> we always uh, identify with money, yep. houses, cars, mm -hmm. but we're we're not identifying with souls, people. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And it's so important that we realize that, hey, man, there's more to life than just material things. It's people getting saved, getting born again, getting right with God. Coming into the kingdom. That's right. If I know that Father, my my God is my Father, mm -hmm. then I'm his, yeah. I'm his responsibility. Yeah. And he's my provider. Now, all I have to do is do what he puts in front of me oh, and seek the God. kingdom. And that's Jesus right. said, when you do that, mm -hmm. all these things She'll be added be, unto are you. added to oh, you. Oh, that's good. And that's, that's the bottom that's line. Right. So right. I, don't, I don't worry about having a pile of money. <laughs> I just want something I worry about having revelation knowledge. Oh, that's what I desire. Oh, when Jesus good. said, uh, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. He wasn't talking about food for your belly. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the word of God, the word that proceeds from God. Man doesn't live by I bread know. alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Well, let me ask you this since I got you on here. <laughs> on you Look, um, what do you think about young pastors these days? Uh, sometime we're, um, we're not seeking the kingdom, but we're seeking uh, ministry sake. If you know what I mean, yes, uh, the system of how to make a, uh, it's almost have it, a big ministry. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what you think? I know you've been in, you've been doing this. How long you been doing this, General? I've been in the ministry for forty years. I'm gonna say that one more time. For forty years. Did you hear that? <laughs> you hear that? Forty years. So, uh, what could you say to young pastors and ministers that's uh, starting now? We've been in the church has been seven years, and I know. Um, one of the things sometimes you got to, like being around you, you keep me focused. You keep me talking about, hey, seek the kingdom of God. You're mm. always talking about the kingdom of God, God's way of doing things. That's right. And you're always emphasizing that and putting that in me and talking to me. I, I, I know that's in your heart. Uh, if you was talking to, let's see, a thousand uh, pastors out here, what's one of the things you would say to them about this uh, area, what we should be doing? One of the first keep things away from. that I would say to a young pastor is, who's your father? Mm. Do you have a father in the Lord? Do you have a man that, that loves you, cares for you, mm. will ask you questions, oh that will minister to you and will be concerned about who you are, not what you have, oh, but who you are. Because uh, God's more interested in the man than he is the ministry. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. You won't make me shout, right? I'll cry. <laughs> Which one? <I'm> <laughs> that's so good. That's, but you so had, good. that's the question that's that good. I would ask. Who's your father? Who's your father? Is, yeah. You know, and that's kind of the foundation of everything. Well, God uh, operates like that. He right. is a father, but he's put men in the earth to be fathers to young ministers. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul talks about Timothy and Titus mm -hmm. and, and Philemon, and uh, mm -hmm. Peter talks about Mark as a mm -hmm. son, and John refers to the churches. He says, my little children. Yeah. And so he's right, they, each of those, John and mm -hmm. Peter and, and Paul, all had sons in the Lord that they ministered to and so if you did back then and out in the days i was growing up as a young kid they would consider that, that as a bastard you know they would say if you didn't have a father well, and that's, that's right. dangerous ground well so, uh, yeah, you're gonna say <laughs> <laughs> well, you touched it, it um, you know there there are and i'll use your word <laughs> there <laughs> are me. there are bastard ministries yeah. out there they're not evil yeah. but they haven't been fathered and the reason why is because we haven't been taught that. Yeah. Uh, the Western Church threw that away uh, when we yeah. back in the mm. Reformation uh, we threw the thing about fathers away. Uh, yeah. We we don't we haven't understood that, but it's a reality, and we yeah. need to we need to know That's that. So good, yes, sir. I'm general. I believe that is. I mean, that is so important, right there. What you're talking about here. Amen. I know ministers listening to this broadcast, watching this broadcast, and. I know that touches their heart because uh, uh, to be in a place that you can't call anyone, can't talk to anyone. That's right. You know, have someone that can guide you and speak in your life when you know, uh, well, when you don't know. Yeah, you think right. you're right <laughs> and speak into your life. There are many ministries, large ministries, mm -hmm. that have stumbled and fallen in the past because they didn't have oh somebody goodness. in their life, somebody that they could relate to, somebody that could call them to account. There's a difference between having a father and having a mentor. Yeah. Having a mentor is yes, a wonderful father. thing. Yeah. A father ministers life. Mm. 
Uh-huh. A mentor just gives information. <gasps> Lee, that's good. Uh, a, a man could mentor me in being a, a carpenter, uh-huh. but he might not necessarily father me because oh, he didn't give me good. any life. That is so good. So man. there's a difference between life being uh-huh. given and knowledge being given. Uh, we're still operating under the tree of knowledge. That's good. Too. And it's... Uh, Oh, good. that's good. That's it's so good. good. That is so good. I know that's touching your heart. It's touching mine right now. I know it's, you know, I just believe that um, this is the time for uh, the men of God. And we was discussing this Sunday, General. We was talking about what you're st- talking about now, about the sons of God mm-hmm. being men of God. That's right. Being responsible for uh, not leaving their families, not walking out and leaving their wives and their kids and stand up and be a man and say, look here, I'm not going to abandon my, my family. I'm not going to quit when times are rough and you and, and, and the husband and wife, they, they're fussing and on. You still don't quit on your family. You be the man of God you're supposed to be and not walk out on them. And we was discussing this Sunday and I was, I was very very uh, passionate about it because I believe this. I don't care. Man, I don't care what you're dealing with. You never leave your family. Well, many men, the reason they do that is because they didn't have an example, didn't have a father in front of them. I can take you right in the scripture and you can go look at Samuel, a godly man, a great prophet, but he was essentially raised, fathered by a man named Eli, Mm. who if you read the scripture, was not a good father. He was not a good father. And that the same thing happened. If you read the Bible, Samuel's sons were not, Mm. Samuel didn't father his sons. He was a great prophet, Mm. but he didn't father his sons because his own sons uh, went went the wrong way. D- D- David was another one. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, it showed up though, Joe. Nah, it showed up. Uh, uh, you could see from David's life the, the right. problems he had with uh, relationships. David said this in the, one of the Psalms. He said, I was born in iniquity and I was conceived in sin. Mm. Another place he said, uh, no man cares for my soul. And I God. wondered why he felt that way. Oh, that's David's good. father, Jesse, I believe David was probably an illegitimate son Mm -hmm. of Jesse. Mm -hmm. And the reason I think that is because when Samuel went to Jesse's house to get a king, he left the boy down in the the field Ah. with the sheep. He called seven of his sons. He sure did. But he let him because he was ashamed. Oh, my God. He was ashamed. And so David, same thing. Mm -hmm. He wasn't fathered well. David wasn't a good father. He lost his sons as well. Samuel, uh, 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 I think I was saying his name correct, Samuel, who was full of wisdom. Yes, you know, and, but yet, and greatly anointed of God. Exactly, but yet had a uh, problem too. At the end of not fulfilling his destiny to the fullest, he could That's have. That's exactly he true. Ended up coming short of. I just believe God is like you saying, General, is putting this in us. What you've been talking about, the kingdom Amen. of God, recognize that we are sons of God. Amen. And we have in, inherit the promises of God. The reason why the I, one reason why the sons of God haven't been manifested is because the sons. Uh, haven't found their fathers yet. Oh, my Lord. You find my your goodness. father, the purpose of God can be worked out oh. more fully. You see, That's this whole thing is about more than being saved so I can go to heaven. That's right. It's being saved so I can manifest the kingdom of God. That's right. But men need to be fathered in the Lord. And I like what you say, manifest the kingdom of God, God's kingdom being manifest on this planet. Through our lives, Through our the lives. way we live, oh. our righteous lives, our way of doing, our way of speaking, the yes. way we touch people's lives. That's right. It's very important. It's very important. I like in Psalms 1, it said, it started talking about this type of person, you know, talking about David, but it was talking about how you get to the place that whenever you put your hand to something, it shall prosper, but mm-hmm. it also says how you, you hang around people that delights themselves yeah, you, in the law. you don't walk with the ungodly. That's right, that's right. <laughs> you hang with people that can speak into your life, but not just speak, but follow.